Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Well, you guilted me into it. I had so many comments um, when I did my skin and cut tutorial that were upset that I was gonna throw away this perfectly good piece of garbage. Um, so I thought, well, uh, I didn't need to need a stencil of a bunch of random reindeer, but I was looking at this because it was actually next to my trash can. It didn't quite make it in. Um, I was looking at this and I thought, you know, these might be some fun shaker windows or like something that I could um, use as an embellishment on a card. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to see what we can make from basically trash. Now, sometimes um, I will keep the waste paper from doing a, I'm using going to use uh, my gel press printing plate, my big one here. Um, sometimes I will keep the waste stencil stuff from a, um, you know, from a die cut, but oftentimes it's, you know, it's very random. I've stamped a bunch of random things. It doesn't really make much sense to keep it as a stencil because it's not really attractive. Um, but I thought with this, I would try to, you know, try to do something. So I've got a variety of my gel printing supplies out. I think I'm going to start with just a very thin, uh, well, actually, let's start with some stenciling and some, I don't really have much of a plan here. I'm going to start with stenciling and some pastels. I've got these um, these Jane Davenport pastels. I think I'm going to try to keep shades of green for all of this because I want to, um, and metallics, because I think this would be really cool if I keep these kind of all green and then I can do my backing in red and have some nice Christmassy, uh, Christmassy stuff. Because you know you always need some extra tags, right, before Christmas. And I need some applicators, so... Applicators. I'll choose my finger. That'll work fine. All right, let's see. I'm just going to go through my stencil here. Put some of this green. Oops. Let's do some of these metallics. This is a pretty one. You could also use pan pastels and sponges. Honestly, I was just kind of like picking up my desk and I saw that next to the trash and I'd just been reading a bunch of comments and I was like, no, don't, don't throw away the deer garbage. So <laughs> I'm like, well, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. So this is going to be very, uh, very impromptu. Um, I'm going to repeat this one maybe because I mean, I'm not going to use the whole, I'm not going to use the whole design anywhere. Oh, that's kind of a pretty color, kind of like a sagey. Green. These are really nice. They're, you could actually use eyeshadows for the same thing, but I do find these uh, are really soft and they release really well, which is really nice. Also, if you have eyeshadows that bother your eyes because they always seem to like make your eyes feel sandy, use them for art because they're probably nice and soft and they will uh, they'll work really well for this. Uh, maybe I'll grab another stencil. I just keep a bin and I've done, I have a video on um, what I use for my, uh, just kind of my, my quick, no fuss, no muss jelly printing supplies. I have a video on that. I'll try to remember to link it down below. But um, essentially, I just keep a bin and it's got these pastels. It's the, it's got um, um, a bottle of like pouring acrylic so I can use it with my wash. I'll show you that in a second. Um, I just got a random assortment of, of stuff so I can do some quick prints and I don't have to get everything in the kitchen sink out, which is, you know, what keeps me from gel printing unless I'm doing a big session. But sometimes you just want to have, you know, that artsy fartsy look on something that you're making. We could, we could uh, dip into the purples too, I think. Maybe use a new finger. Maybe some of the purple metallic would be pretty too. I just don't want to use reds because I want the red in my background like to show through the shaker windows. And I don't know, I'm, I mean, this might end up being like a, a bust. We'll see. Let's move this over here. I basically want to have enough. I love that purple, metallic purple color. Um, I basically just want to have enough interest on this so that it jazzes up that plain white cardstock. I also grabbed some of that really cheap. Um, oops, let me switch my finger. Uh, that really cheap paper I got at um, Michael's at Artboard stuff. 100 pack was about six bucks. I think regular is eight, but they always have those 20% off. Let's do some of that coupon going on. Um, so I grabbed some of that because I did intend on getting that for doing some gel printing. So we'll see how it works. I'm not going to get too fussy with this because my gosh, 
How long do we want to spend on garbage, right? How long do we want to spend making garbage work? <laughs> I hope I'm not offending anybody. I am like, I am, this is in good spirits. I am doing this in, um, in, in the spirit of fun. A little bit of gold in there. Okay, that's really pretty, I think. All right, so now I'm going to use some gouache. I have several different shades of gouache here. Um, and the reason, uh, actually, we'll just use, ooh, maybe some, actually some like Prussian blue. I'm just gonna kind of mix it up over here. Now gouache does not have the binder in it like, um, like say a, uh, an acrylic has, it's like watercolor essentially, but it's it's nice and thick. So I can take that, I can mix it with, grab a little bit more of that green, um, mix it with any like pouring acrylic or, you know, Mod Podge or whatever and make the adhesive basically, it's gonna make all the stick to my, um, my project. Now I'm gonna use some iridescent acrylic. This is by Arteza. I'm gonna take some of this green. These are really pretty colors. A few drops of that around. And um, I got this color, it's called Fancy Black, but it has green undertones to it, so I think that would also be kind of cool. We'll see, I, I mean, I don't really know. Don't know what we're gonna end up with. And, um, I also have this white color, playful pink actually it's called. I think we'll hold off on that. So what I'm gonna do is move these out of the way and then I'm gonna just kind of uh, go like this to mix up that gouache. Look at those undertones, isn't that pretty? Now the pastel is gonna really cling to the, uh, the mat. Now all I need to do is just make sure I have more stuff down than what my uh, paper is. So it's got, I need a bigger printing area than my paper. This is like 12 by 14, I think. And I love that blue. I want some more of that. Or, you know, I could just go. That's probably better. Um, so I know I'll have plenty of space. I know it looks kind of gross, but we need, we're gonna need contrast, right? So we can always have brighter things behind it, which if we're doing a shaker card, you probably will. So now I'm going to take my, um, my thing here. I'm trying to decide which way I want, I'm going to want things to face because I need up the side I put down. Hmm. I don't know. They're both so cute. I think I'll do it this way. So it's going to be cute either way. So I just want to make sure that it's going to be covered everywhere. And now I'm going to take one of my scrap pieces of paper, which is nine by 12. And I'm just going to roll over it like that with my hands. And I'll end up with those little deer background on there. This will need more layers. But it'll give me a starting off point for something else. See, this is this is the thing. When I start by using this scrap, then I'm going to make up a bunch of other like backgrounds and scraps. And it like will never end. So there's a first layer of a, um, of a background. And... Let's lift this up and see. I just want to make sure I've got those edges pushed down well. This won't take too long to dry. I like this because rather than like spraying ink on it, it's not going to, it shouldn't warp. If I let this dry on the plate, I just, I'm afraid I would tear it trying to remove it. So that's why I'm not doing that. Ooh, now that is very metallic. It's very funky looking. I've got some nice texture there. Um, I think I'm just going to let that dry for now. I might stencil over it once it's dry, but I think I'll just leave it like that. And then I want to pull up a print from this. So what I think I'll do is just take this really sheer kind of, um, actually, you know what? I'll use the, the pouring acrylic. So I had somebody actually ask me <laughs> the other day if I had a recommendation for a cheaper version of like um, Golden's, uh, high flow acrylics and I said well I actually hadn't used them but I use paint pouring acrylics in place of a high flow low viscosity paint um, and I like it for gel printing because I don't really care for doing um, I'm actually going to see if I can 
do two side by side. I don't really care for the whole um, paint pouring thing because I just felt like it was so wasteful and um, I didn't like having to let the stuff dry all the time. It was just kind of like, it just wasn't for me. Got a background there, I don't know what I'll use these for. Um, and now I'm going to do a clean the plate print. And to do that, I will take, I think I'll take this playful pink, why not? We'll see how that looks. Well, maybe I'll even put in, um, I have a, my Arteza iridescent pink set here. Maybe I will use some brighter pink. I don't know if I've ever used these before. I think my daughter Lila has though. I think she, because some of these were open and some weren't. I have a feeling that she was, she had used them. Ooh, that's a pretty color, isn't that? That's called Glowing Peach. Ooh, it's nice. And I will need a larger sheet of paper for this. So I'm going to go grab one of those. Howdy, I'm back, obviously. I'm going to clean off my brayer just a smidgen by rolling it on this waste paper here. I guess it's all kind of like waste paper until it's all done. I'll probably spray some ink on some of these once they're dry just to kind of fill in the white backgrounds. And I don't know what I'll do with these. Maybe I'll be wrapping paper. Who knows? But I wanted to get the excess green off of here before I brayered out this peach and pink color. And my goal here is going to be cleaning the plates. So I'm going to coat it really well. And these this color will show through any of the gaps in the background. I think this will be really pretty because I'll have some good contrast. And um, I will let the paper dry on the plate. And then when I peel it up, I'll get every little bit of painty goodness off there. Which side's cleaner? This side seems to be cleaner. I have to line it up pretty well because it is 12 inches wide. And my plate is 12 inches wide, so I'm just going to try to get that as well, good as I can. I think that's pretty good. Perfect. And then you just want to make sure you press really good, get everything completely covered. And then, of course, I've got leftovers on my brayer. So you guys think I'm wasteful and throwing away a stencil, but, you know, honestly, I do use up almost everything. Oh, that's pretty. I'm cleaning my brayer like this. Get any extra off. And now I'm going to go take a lunch break, and when we come back, we will see what this looks like, and hopefully I'll have some fantastic ideas on what to do with my garbage paper. <laughs> Actually, before I take my lunch break, I thought, this is dry enough, I'm going to do some stenciling over there, and I like that design. I'm going to use this uh, iridescent green. Ooh, actually, no. Yeah, I am going to use that. I was thinking I'll do the purple, but no, I'm going to do the green right now. I don't need too much. I'm going to use a makeup sponge, and you can wash these out. want to get some pattern I'm working on top of the uh, paper that's drying on the mat right now actually I probably should put uh, I should put another one of the papers underneath just to get a little bit more interest on that let's do that nothing is going to waste <laughs> well who knows or I'm just making a huge, you know, m mess of wasteful other things. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what gets used. Although I think it's going to be really, I think it's going to look really cool. And maybe it'll just be gift tags, but that's all right. I'm really trying to hit any of those places where I've got just plain white. And stenciling like this, applying paint like this, you don't get as much uh, wrinkling on your paper. Um, hmm. I'm not sure anything about this yet, but that's where we're at at this point. And uh, now I'm going to go take a lunch break. 
I'm back after lunch and this is dry. I'm not sure what I think of it quite yet, but I'm going to set it aside so we can take a look at what this turned out like. Uh, so I love this technique of letting everything dry on your plate and then um, and then pulling up a clean up print because it does a great job at cleaning your plate and then you've got a really nice, um, just a really beautiful uh, paper that you can use for whatever. This will be nice for backgrounds or um, or whatever. So uh, even you could use it for wrapping paper, but it's nice and thick. I think it might be kind of a waste to use as wrapping paper, but you know we'll we'll see. We'll see um, what we think of it. Now, I also thought I would do some card bases and tag bases and stuff. And in my bin of, I keep this bin, like I mentioned, of supplies for printmaking. Um, I have a bunch of card bases here. So I'm just going to go ahead and print some of those. I'm going to use some pinks and reds and uh, try to get some nice contrasting colors that will look good. With, I'm running out of space, guys. That would look good. <laughs> this is such a mess. Um, they would look nice, basically, on as a background. Okay, uh, let's again go with stencils. I like this one. We'll do that. We'll do this time some warm colors, and I will use these reds. These are pretty. There we go. Reds and pinks. I love those colors. Oh, you know what? I could I could have used my um. Yeah, I'll use my fingers. But I could use one of those little cosmetic widgets I just used for the uh, for the other thing there um, that I just used for stenciling. This is probably very boring. Don't worry, I won't have you. I'll just we'll just do a few and then I'll go and do the rest of my own because this is one of those puttery things. I actually really love puttery projects like this. Um, I don't know, which is kind of fun. I'm not too you know you're making a big batch of something, so you're not like super worried about how anything's gonna come out. I love how the stencils just grip to this uh, to this paper. Oh, I want to go all the way out to the edges too because um, because I'm gonna want to make use of this entire plate while I'm doing the backgrounds because I'll have plenty of of uh, I have plenty of tags and card bases and stuff like that to print. So this will be nice artsy fartsy little little card thing that I'm doing here. Let's grab another design. Oh, this one's kind of pretty. It looks almost like a quilty pattern. You know what? Do I still have that bag of cosmetic edges? I think I will use that because otherwise we're going to be here all day. And look how quick and easy that is. Where'd my metallics go? Oh, that's a pretty color. I love the metallics. I should probably do more metallics on this layer because they look so good and they they will really uh, be opaque. Use some of that red metallic. Uh, let's grab another pattern. Let's see what else do we got. Oh, this one's kind of neat. kind of like fractured looking looking design. Um, I try to fill up the uh, what doesn't have pattern on it. It's kind of fun. Way quicker than my fingers. Red and pink. You can be real fussy with this, but honestly, uh, this is going to be a background and most of it's not going to show, so I'm not going to get too, too bothered by anything. I'm just going to go and have some fun with it. If you want to, like, pounce any other pigment in, you can. Totally up to you. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with um, do some pinks and reds. I've got this playful pink that we used before. I'll do a few drops of that. This is pretty thick. I'm surprised at how thick this is for bottled paint. Generally, your bottled craft paints are a little bit thinner. 
Let's see, I've got some red, orange. Yeah, let's use this nice red. This is called a fiery red. But we're using some of the colors I've already used. It's going to make everything match. Oops, I don't know if I've, oh, I haven't opened that one yet. Let's just wipe that off. Why waste it? We just wipe it right off there. This one's thinner though. Interesting. And we'll do a little of this uh, peachy color because we used it before. It's probably going to be pretty subtle because we've got, you know, tone on tone, pink and red and peach. So let's just see what we got. Let's see what we get here. I like to pick up the different colors and just kind of work them around. I want just a um, kind of distressed look. Actually, this is going to be iridescent with iridescent, so I don't know... Uh, Really don't know at all how that's going to how it's going to look. It's probably gonna be very shimmery. And let's just put down a bunch of these different tag bases and pieces of cardstock and what have you. I think that our little like laying down reindeers that are all in a row will work well on this type of paper. I have some folded ones. Oh, this one's a folded. No, it's not. Oh, well. Hmm. Maybe. Is that a folded one? Oh, these are all, um, these are all just, uh, layer, layering pieces. That's all right. We can layer them on a card. Now I'm going to go back to that big piece of paper. Press it down really well. And I'm just going to be repeating this for some more background pieces. I won't uh, subject you to that. Pretty, just a just a um, shimmery, patterny background. All right, we'll pull the rest of these up, and then um, I will leave you while I make a bunch more backgrounds just for our project here. We should see how those look, actually, and I can show you here how those colors will look together. Very grungy. I'm not sure if I like it or not, but. Um, Hey, layer till you like it, right? You know, more of the same. Well, there you have it. And uh, we'll be back later once I have a bunch of backgrounds and we're ready to craft these together. I really like that one the best. Okay, don't mind the hum of the laminator. I had a few ideas. So first of all, let me show you the uh, the deer here. Um, you know, I did go around with some colored pencils and kind of zhuzh up a little of the color a bit. Any place I felt like it needed a little bit of touch of something. I used some metallic and some regular colored pencils just to kind of, um, you know, make it a little bit more pleasing. And also, colored pencil goes really great on the, um, like these textured areas. It picks it up really well. And then I was thinking that I might put, because um, first my first idea was shaker cards for this, but then I thought I could take a, a clear label and stick it on the back and then sprinkle glitter through it. And I thought, well, that might look kind of cool, but I still like the shaker idea. But then I'm like, how am I going to glue all those little pieces? How am I going to cut these apart to do shakers? And then it occurred to me that I could laminate this paper and um, then I could just cut out the, the deer however I want them to be shaker windows and I don't have to worry about gluing it or anything. I just need to glue a border when I'm all done. Hope that makes sense. So I've got a laminating pouch here. I haven't laminated anything in a while, so hopefully I have uh, so hopefully I have everything on the right settings. I'm gonna slide that in the laminating pouch like so and Let's give it a go and see how she does. This is an Amazon Basics 
laminator, putting it in the fold first. I haven't used this since probably, oh, I think last time I used it, I was doing Mother's Day tags. Um, so I think this will just be the easiest way to do a, uh, a shaker window because, um, because then it'll all be sealed down. So just gotta be patient. I guess you can see it starting to, to come out here on the other side. Oh, I'll show you the, uh, the finished prints. I'll go grab those while we're waiting because I've got a stack of them on the floor over here drying. I don't know, I won't use all of these for this project because I made way too many, which happens when you are when you are printmaking. I'm just gonna scoot this to the side. Sometimes I put a laminator, a thing through a laminator a couple times if I have bubbles or it doesn't seem to be very like if it seems like it's not fully done, but I'm just gonna show you some of these. I think they're kind of fun. They have like nice shimmer to them because of the metallic paint. Some of these are card bases, some of them are just backgrounds. I like how that one came out. This was a clean up at the end. I really like how that came out. More, these are all very similar. This one's a little different though. This has many layers and some stenciling on top. I think that's pretty. These all remind me of the old basic gray papers, don't, don't they? Just kind of fun. And that's that big uh, cleanup print they did the first time. And then when I was done, after my last cleanup print, I just sprayed my plate down with some rubbing alcohol and then I, um, and then, uh, and then it was, then it was clean. I wiped it down. All right. So there are our, that's our laminated piece. So what are we going to do now? I think I'm going to turn off my laminator for one. And I guess we'll trim this out, figure out how we want to, how we want to divide this up. I've got a paper trimmer that I'm hoping will be sharp enough to trim it. And I don't know if I'll be able to use every deer, but I'm going to try to conserve as much as I can because we've gone through all this, all this trouble, right? So I'm going to try to trim right in between those deer and the group over there. It's hard to tell because I have a green paper trimmer. <laughs> it's probably going to take a few cuts. And I might need to pop through the laminator again if it seems like it's coming unsealed. Oh no, that looks pretty good. Okay. And then I was thinking I would get two card bases out of this. So I want to cut in between and I can... Um, I just want to have enough space around them so that I can either put a strip of cardstock for a border or something. No, am I going to have to? Oh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to put that through the laminator again just to seal that paper. Maybe, maybe not because I mean, it does, doesn't have to be like watertight or anything. I think I've got just enough room there. And I will be sacrificing the deer on the bottom because. I'm not going to be able to do, do both, or I could actually do, yeah, I could actually, I could get either one grouping of six or two groupings of three. Maybe I'll do two of three. I think that might look a little bit nicer. I'm still going to end up sacrificing the deer on the bottom, but actually I'm going to go this, cut it this way because it's a little easier to see. And I've got a straight edge to work on. And then our poor little deer on the bottom are going to get their heads chopped off, but what are you going to do? Right? I'm surprised it's cut the lamination. Okay, so there we've got our pieces. Now this one here, I think we'll end up trimming and making either, yeah, I'll make two things out of this. I might sacrifice that one and do these three together and then do the bottom one. I might be able to get both of those. Let's just, uh, this could be a nice bookmark or just a, oh. that's going to work. And then I could do two together or I could just, um, Actually, I probably can get two. Two little embellishments out of there, two little shaker embellishments. Yeah, I, got, I definitely have room for that. You can flip it over, see a little bit better. Yeah, I got plenty of room there. 
That'll cut very easily. All right, so we have got a bunch of things here that we can play with on our cards. I'm gonna trim off the excess um, stuff there, but uh, let me get myself kind of situated and when we come back, we'll put these into a project. All right, I have a plan. I'm gonna use this as a backing paper and I want maybe, like especially on these ones that have three, maybe to have different shaker things behind them. So what I'm gonna do right now is just kind of um, very like, just kind of vaguely draw a box around each of these shaker pieces. And the reason I'm doing this really big is because that way I will be able to, when I go to put the, um, the backing on, if it's not perfect, I'll just trim it afterwards. That's just going to give me a little more wiggle room. It probably doesn't make sense now, but it will once I trim it out. So I'm gonna cut all those pencil lines, and when we come back, we're gonna build our shakers. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I actually already um, kind of made a border around each of my little cutouts here with my famous yellow foam squares. This is all I have left, this bag here. Isn't that crazy? Um, and what I'm going to do is actually put these sequins in there. I don't know what, uh, I think I like, I feel like I'm playing a shell game here. Oh, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna use these as fillers. So you wanna make sure that you divide off each, sec each section. I wanna have a different color between each. I don't know if that's enough. I'm wondering if I should put some like beads in there too. Well, I can, I'll, I'll have a bunch of other chances to redo it, to do other ones. Not redo them, once this is stuck down, it's staying, but um, I'll see how this one looks with just sequins, and if I feel like it's kind of boring, then I'll add some um, some beads or glitter or something, I don't know, uh, something else to them. And let's see, how did I have this guy open? I know I've opened this before, at least I'm pretty sure, maybe I haven't. Well. I feel like maybe I need a few more of the blue ones. That one looks a little stingy. Don't be stingy with your sequins. Don't be stingy with your sequins. Okay, now I'm gonna peel off all of these backing pieces, which will probably be very boring, so I will probably edit that out. In fact, I'm just gonna go right ahead and stop the camera now, and we'll come back once these are all peeled off. All right, all of the... Um, the backings are pulled off, so now I want to stick down this paper uh, so that I trap in all of the pieces. And that's why I wanted this to be a little bit bigger, so I'd have some room to, you know, I wouldn't have to have it stuck down exactly right. I can trim it off later. So then, oh my gosh, I think that's pretty cute. So now I've got this little this little shaker, this, this little, um, oh, that's cute. We've got these little um, sequin shakers. Okay, that's really adorable. So, um, I'm not sure if I want to trim it exactly or if I want to leave a border or what. And I'm looking at these, I think I might add some little seed beads into the next one that I do, but this is the basic idea of what we're gonna do here for the rest of these shakers and then um, we'll put these on a card. We'll determine what else we need to do. Now see, the reason I wanted to go real close with the foam squares is to not only keep all of the shaker stuff like in and around, like just into the area where I want it. I didn't want to waste them hiding behind the legs and also I didn't want to waste them in the, in the middle. So keep that in mind while you're doing your foam. Foam tape would probably work really well too. Um, so use whatever you have. You just need to get some dimension in there. I think that is super cute. And I am excited to make up the rest of these shakers. It'll be the same way, just maybe with some more sea beads or something else in there to give it a little bit more interest. Okay. <laughs> Had a lot of shakers made. All right, so this is the first one that I did, that we did together, oh so long ago. Um, and I didn't think I filled them well enough. Good shaker action, I like that. So then I did this one, and I added seed beads too, and I really like it, and it sounds like a tambourine. And the beat goes on, do, 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 do. Isn't that nice? I mean, you can have a little Christmas jam. You give everybody one of these. It's like a tambourine, it's a card, you know? <laughs> it's the card for the most, I don't know. I kind of like that one. I like the movement. I like the sound of it. This one, I cut one of those, one of the three deer one down to two, and I did a red and green because I thought that was kind of um, 
very Christmassy, seed beads and sequins. This one actually used another sequin uh, assortment that I had, and it's not as noisy, I think, because it doesn't have the seed beads in it. Although, is this one noisy? Yeah, it takes the seed beads to make it noisy. This one, I did another uh, kind of, I did a green, red, and blue. I like that combination. This one I did shades of uh, blue, purple, and green. One of them I thought I didn't have enough contrast, but, oh yeah, I think it's this one. This one, because I had um, mostly blue and green, and it, it really just blended too much with the background. This one I did pink, purple, and, uh, yeah, pink and purple, and I like the contrast better there. So, now I have to make cards. I have been working on this all day, and I still have no cards made. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with these. Honestly, I think they would make kind of cute ornaments. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe... Because I mean, so much work in this, I was thinking maybe I'd turn into a gift card or money holder or something. Um, I don't know. I did grab this ribbon I've had forever, American Crafts uh, Glittered Rick Rack, which I thought would go well with this. Because, you know, when in Rome, right? You know, we've got sequins, we've got beads, <laughs> we've got lamination, we got shit. Might as well just throw in some glitter brick rack. And I also grabbed these stamps because I thought they'd be kind of cute because they're kind of Rudolphy. And I don't know. Um, I have to think about this. I have no idea where to go now. Um, I'm not sure if these are going to go with any of the background papers that I made. <laughs> Which is all, you know, I like this. I don't know. It seems like a bit much, doesn't it? <laughs> it all seems like it. I could have just thrown the paper away. I could have just thrown away the background paper. That's not even big enough. And, you know, gone on with my life. <laughs> but I felt so guilty. <laughs> you guys made me feel so guilty for throwing away the, for potentially throwing away the background paper. Might make tags. I don't know. Would make cute ornaments, though. But paper ornaments do not last. They last like a year and then they get all bent edged and then it's not a good scene. So I don't know. Uh, as soon as I figure out what I'm going to do, I will let you know. I made one decision. I'm putting Rick Rack on this. Isn't that cute? Yeah, that's gonna. We'll do that right now. It's baby steps, friends. Baby steps. Well, I'm just gonna go right on the lamination part. I'm gonna trim it. Yeah, why not? Seriously, guys. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing today. I was gonna be. I should be painting actually and planning a live stream, but I got sidetracked. Oh, that's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. All right, we're one step closer to a card or a tag or an ornament. All right, so I decided to take two of the orange backgrounds I uh, gel printed and I embossed in kind of like this purple color and clear embossing powder, happy holidays, may you play in all the reindeer games for these two, just to make some quick and easy gift cards. Um, and also not to take away from the, the shakers because let's face it, we put some time into those. And then I was thinking that I would like to um, emboss a sentiment here in white. So I've got my white embossing powder and I do want to make sure that there's not gonna be any static. So I'm just going to uh, kind of brush this with some, well, I use baby powder. That's my homemade anti-static pouch. And I'm gonna stamp this with clear ink and then emboss it with white embossing powder. And the reason I do this instead of my white um, ink, pigment ink, is because I find the white ink just, uh, it's not as sticky. So I'm just gonna stamp this down here. Find, a, find an area where it's pretty dark so that it will stand up hopefully. And if this doesn't look good, then I can always stamp it on, um, I can always stamp it on a uh, on a piece of cardstock and then glue it over it. So I'm gonna try this first, and if it looks bad, then you know I can I can do it the other way. That looks like it's gonna be fine. This is an old Stampin' Up uh, box that I have my white embossing powder in because it came in a really big jar, and uh, I wanted to make it a little more convenient. I used to have my clear in that as well, because I used to use it for a lot of DIY projects, but it got kind of gross and dirty, so that's why I don't do it for the clear anymore. Just that white, because if I'm doing white, it's generally in a pretty clean situation. When I'm doing clear, sometimes I'm embossing on like wood or on something else, and you just get, I don't know, it seems like I would get debris in it. I don't really care for this gun for embossing, but it's what I have for drying my watercolor paper, so I just use it. But I wouldn't recommend this as your like <coughs> first choice in embossing guns. Oh, I like that just fine. That looks fine. 
Uh, you have to be kind of careful also on a, where you've used acrylic paint. You've got to make sure that paper is really dry because, well, for one, your powder could stick to other places. And also, you could get some blistering in the, uh, in the paper as well. And then I'm going to put this on here. Oh, I think that's kind of sweet, actually. Um, my my uh, big adhesive gun is actually upstairs with all my Christmas cards waiting to be mailed out because some of them uh, are homemade envelopes, so they need to be sealed. Um, and and uh, some of them are waiting for photos, like to put uh, the kids' photos in. We send photos to some people, some relatives. Uh, then again, I mean, we should just seal up the cards and send them so they get out in a timely fashion. <clears throat> Don't let the perfect be the enemy, enemy of the good people. Oh my goodness. It's like the foam squares all over again. So let's center that up there. And I'm considering putting on some of that glittery rickrack. So let's see how that looks. Let's see. Yay or nay? I'm not sure. I kind of, I don't know. I kind of like it simpler, but... That's cute too. I mean, how often am I going to use glitter rickrack, right? I mean, I think I'm going to, well, I don't know. What do you think? You can let me know in the comments below. I'm just going to use it because I've got it out. I've had this for ages. It's so nice to use something. You know, it's so nice to get something used that you've been hanging on to for years because then it justifies your hoarding of the thing, right? I don't know if I'll do the rest of these on camera um, just because... I mean, I'm not going to do anything too crazy as far as making these cards. I feel like, you know, it would take away from the beautiful, <laughs> the beautiful drill. I know. Look at the back of this card. But you know what? I'd still send it. I'm not worried about the back of my card having ink smudges on it. You know what? You know it's handmade when the back of your card has ink smudges. It doesn't bother me one single bit. You could always put some paper on that if it bothered you, but... All right. <clears throat> The world according card making, card making according to Lindsay. All right, three down, four more to go. Cards, tags, who knows? Who knows what we're gonna do? But I'll finish these up and then I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I'll show you what we did. If there's anything earth shattering, then I will turn the camera on and share it with you then. Okay, I'm gonna call these done. Let's take a look at what we finished here. I apologize, the furnace just turned on, but I'm but it's like almost five. I'm ready to be done with this uh, chapter of my life. <laughs> Here we go. So this one, I was actually contemplating just chucking that one because I didn't really like the fact that there was not much contrast with the deer, but I grabbed this background from the other day and I plopped it on there on a card base. I think it's fine. It's definitely fine for a last minute card. I'm gonna put it in the uh, the card basket in case we you know, need a last minute one. Um, I always like to have extras. I really like how this one came out that we did together. I love the classic red and green and I think that there's just so much going on with the background of this paper and that gel printed um, feature that that's all it needs. And I like the I like the Rick Rack after all. These two I, saw, I showed you at the beginning. Um, I think they'll be fine for tags on presents. I think they'll look great because I plan on doing a lot of really plain wrapping paper and then jazzing it up with some yarn or some funky tags. This one right here um, and this one, these are going to be for money holders because like money or if you happen to get a gift certificate to a, a store or a restaurant that doesn't do gift cards to do a gift certificate, then it can go in here. But you know, money is good everywhere and it always fits. So that's really handy for gifts for kids and whatnot. Um, and again, I really like the gel printed background papers, so I didn't want to overdo it. And I nestled a couple of the Rick Racks together just to bring the red from there and the green from the background, kind of tie it together. I love the way the lamination feels, I have to say. It does feel kind of substantial and, and kind of fun. This one's just a, and, and I used some slim line bases that I already had cut, which is really nice. So this one goes this way. This one goes this way. Again, um, another money holder, gift certificate holder, I think, and it, it feels just so substantial. I love it. These will fit in your regular number 10 business envelopes, which is nice. And then last but not least is um, my color wheel. Dear, I really like the way that this looks with the, you know, the rainbow, color rainbow there. Um, and I just put it simply on some card bases. I'll have to make an envelope for this because it's kind of a weird size. It's seven by uh, five and a half. So, um... I mean, I could put it in a six by nine envelope, but it'll have a lot of leftover space, so I'll just do a custom envelope for that. And again, this would be a good one for a gift card, or maybe even, you could probably even do, you might even be able to do four gift cards in here or something if it's for like, you know, when you're kids, you don't know what to get them, you wanna make sure that you're not just getting them clutter. Anyway, um, 
I'm happy with these, you know. And uh, I was gonna, I was gonna throw away that that waste piece from the Scan and Cut video, but you know what? I'm glad you guys guilted me into making projects with it, even though my craft room is a complete and utter pigsty right now, and I need to pick it up because I've got stuff stacked all over the place. Um, I'm still not crazy about this one, but I think it's okay. <laughs> and I used some of my uh, the ribbons. These are from those those scrap bags I bought for a dollar at the uh, quilt shop. I thought that those were really great. I love how they're kind of like real, um, you know, sketchy looking. They're all like, you know, uneven sized and everything. I think it's kind of fun. But uh, there you have it. I want to thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Do you think this was a good way to keep some trash out of the landfill or did I just make extra trash to go in the landfill? You can let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.